here we have a situation where the court is looking at just a few simple words. Whether, a, whether when the law says that it has to be established by a state for individuals to receive subsidies, these are on the exchanges. We have the federal exchange, which is your Obamacare.com, your healthcare.gov uh, boondoggle that has been such a disaster versus the state exchanges, which not very many states have set up exchanges. And we know from uh, the situation where we had uh, the architect of Obamacare, Jonathan Gruber, stated, uh, as many of you know, that uh, he considered many Americans to be very stupid. But what mm -hmm. he did when he set up the law is he made sure that uh, we that there were not subsidies to be given w uh, unless a state set up an exchange. So when the Supreme Court looks at this, if they uphold that language, which is the language that uh, the the Democrats put in there, that President Obama himself put into this law, then it would do uh, a disastrous for his law. And if the Supreme Court does say that the administration has to honor the the exchanges of the language that the the way that they wrote the language, it looks like we're going to the government. We the government is going to lose more than 6.4 million policyholders. Now the New York Times and some other Democrat politicians have said this is going to be a disaster for America. This is going to drive people back into poverty. Uh, do you see that happening? Do you foresee something like that happening, or will there? be something else to replace it? Well, if there's a disaster, it's on the shoulders of, of those who wrote the law. You know, Nancy Pelosi mm -hmm. famously stated that we must pass the law to find out what's in it. Well, when we found out what's in it, the Supreme Court is now looking at what's in it. And if the court upholds the basic language of the law itself as written, it will be a disaster. But it is, it's a disaster caused by those who brought Obamacare upon the American people when the American people didn't want it, when the American people rejected it. And now Congress will look at options to, to remove and to replace Obamacare. It, it's time for Obamacare to, do, to go. We've seen uh, its assault on our freedom, on our religious freedom with the HHS mandate. Um, and time and time again, this law has failed, whether it, whether it is that healthcare.gov website or the various implementation aspects of Obamacare, it has been a failure. And the Supreme Court is now looking at it and they're not going to look at this based on whether it's go what the result is going to be. They're looking at what uh, the Democrats who proposed this law, who passed this law, uh, without taking any input from a majority of the American people, to find out and, and what their decision will be, will be based on what that language actually is inside the law. I mean, so this is the thing that I think a lot of people uh, get mixed up in, in the world of punditry. We, we talk about emotions and, and this and that, but we're, that's really what we're talking about here. The Supreme Court is looking at language. They're really not looking at how people, well, hopefully they're not looking at how people feel about this law. It seems like a good idea. Oh, everybody will have health insurance. That's actually not how it's turned out. The Supreme Court is going to be strictly looking at the language. As a, as a lay person, Matt, I... I find the idea that they could find this anything else than um, egregious language. You know, I, I, I can't believe that they would rule in any other way. What's your feeling on how the Supreme Court justices are viewing this language requirement right now? We have a situation where essentially the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, found that there was a problem with the way the law was written and rewrote the law themselves. It's, it's a case of the bureaucracy going out of control. We've seen this with the IRS time and time again. And what, when the Supreme look, Court looks at this, if they are to actually look at the language of the law, the very plain, clear language of the law, and say this is what the law says and it must be implemented that way, even if it does disastrous effects uh, to Obamacare itself, that would be the right way to look at this. It's actually a basic principle of statutory interpretation is at stake here. But if the court were to do what the IRS did and allow the IRS to essentially rewrite Obamacare, take what Congress passed, what the Democrats wrote, what Congress passed, uh, what Obamacare, what President Obama himself signed into law and change it, 
then that would be a very disastrous uh, look at what the Supreme Court could do to, to laws that are passed by Congress and signed by a president. It's a very simple, very, very simple case, and it is probably going to be very contentious at the Supreme Court because there are those on the court who do want to see this upheld and do want to see Obamacare stand for the legacy for President Obama.